Welcome everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our first official Inkoka webinar. Um, it's uh, pleasant having you all here. Uh, this is going to be a space where you, our lovely business owners, will get the latest scoop and tips on how to start, manage, and grow your businesses. Uh, we've noticed an overwhelming interest from business owners in learning how to use e-commerce to scale their, their businesses. This is indicated by, further by the thousands of people who have signed up for this webinar. So we are glad to have you guys here. Uh, we aim to share insights on how to scale your business using e-commerce. And just to get some, uh, started, I'll start with some context around what we are aiming to achieve today. Um, you will hear from uh, two individuals, a fellow business owner who has transitioned their business into e-commerce. Uh, he'll speak through some of the challenges, successes, and lessons that he has learned doing that. You'll also hear from an e-commerce expert concerning how to start, scale, and build your business uh, using e-commerce. Um, during the duration of this webinar, uh, we have opened up the chat and uh, we would like you to feel free to post any questions that you might have, which we will address at the end of the webinar. So I'm just going to kick off with um, some interesting themes and stats on the increasing importance of e-commerce within the South African landscape on, and on a global scale. Um, in 2020, approximately 31% of South African small businesses had an online presence. And um, there are definitely benefits to selling online. According to a survey of South African small business owners, the top benefits of e-commerce adoption for small businesses include increased sales, expanded customer reach, and improved customer experience. According to a similar survey, 54% of respondents reported that online sales had increased in 2020 compared to the previous year. And we can look at a global scale. E-commerce is growing. And it's a massive industry accounting for about $5.7 trillion in um, revenue in um, uh, 2022. There's an increasing adoption of digital payments on a global scale and also in South Africa, making it easier and more convenient for everyday consumers to purchase um, products and services online. There's also continued growth of mobile and um, smartphone purchases both globally and, and, and um, um, locally. According to a, a survey, the top barriers for e-commerce um, in South Africa are adoption or, or e-commerce adoption for small businesses are one, a lack of technical skills, uh, two, resources and finance. And that's the purpose of this webinar today. It's to engage you on how you can overcome some of these barriers to scale your business using e-commerce. So without further ado, I would like to uh, transition to our first guest. He goes by the name Lawrence Hild. Um, he's the founder of Folk Cafe, a restaurant and roastery that runs uh, brick and mortar and has also transitioned into e-commerce. Um, hello, Lawrence. It is a pleasure to have you on the webinar today. Um, we'd like to uh, get into the conversation now. Could you please talk us through the type of business you run? And what inspired you um, to sell online? Unfortunately, Lawrence is experiencing some technical issues. So we will transition to our second guest, who is an e-commerce expert. He calls by the name uh, Kyle DeFoldi. He is a CEO of Airfold Industries uh, Digital Division. Um, Kyle will walk us through a framework on how to start, build, and scale your business uh, with e-commerce. I'm just going to sound check if Kyle is on the call. Hello, Kyle. Um, it's a privilege having you here. Are you there and are you ready? Hey, Frank. Welcome. Super, super excited to be here. Um, the mic seems to be okay. The camera not yet, but I'm definitely ready to share some value. That's perfect. Thanks, Carl. Um, the floor is yours. Talk us through um, your framework on how to build and scale an e-commerce business. Fantastic. So in 2023, one of the greatest things we need to obviously remember in building and then scaling a business is that you have to work on your systems. 100% true for every one of the over 100 businesses we've helped globally in over 30 different industries. So the idea behind building anything is you've got to have your systems well and in place to be able to achieve 
um, good scale. Because if you're, as a business owner, trying to do everything yourself, in the beginning, when you only have a small number of things to worry about, it's not hard. But as time goes on, you obviously start adding employees, you start adding in additional suppliers. And while most companies can scale from um, zero to five figures monthly by themselves, from five to six, you really got to worry about adding in additional support staff. Now, in the modern world, obviously, being able to leverage things like um, internet tools and AI will obviously help you tremendously in achieving growth there. Just quickly sorting out this one thing. This is the other thing about tech. You've got to really, really love tech. So I do advise anyone starting up their business to definitely get a handle on tech or find yourself a tech person to help you out. Well, thanks, Carl. Um, you speak a lot about systems and, and tech. Uh, could you walk us through, because I imagine with, with the audience that we're dealing with, uh, we have business owners who are running successful businesses, thinking of transitioning into e-commerce in order to scale and grow their businesses. Walk us through some of the most important systems and tech required to start an e-commerce business. And then walk us through any of the uh, differences um, required in order to scale and any of the changes that you have seen uh, quite prevalent within the industry? It's a great, great question. Thanks, Frank. So when people want to consider taking whether they're a new startup or whether they're a retail store moving into e com the biggest thing is you need a place for people to see what you're selling and you need a way to take money for what you're selling and then obviously a way to get in their stock. So the three pillars of any good business, you know. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself a good quality website with WordPress dominating the market as the easiest entry to play, um, entry to the market in that it's partly free, but it gets pay to play as you scale up versus Shopify, which has obviously a minor barrier to entry on a low cost. I think it's three or 400 Rand at the moment for South Africans, which is amazing. And the 20 or $30 for most of the rest of the world for the starter pack. Now Shopify is great in the sense that it obviously is mostly done for you in the sense that you don't have to worry about a lot of the backend APIs and integrations because they have wonderful app stores. But WordPress has its advantages for certain customizations. So definitely find yourself uh, a quality developer who knows the language. I'm always a fan of watching for the red flags. So when you hire a developer, you know, make sure you can ask them a lot of questions about how they would go about building it for you. And if, if they don't seem to make sense, you know, check on them. Don't, don't rely 100% on the word of just one person. Then Ecom Gateways. Um, as far as Ecom Gateways, Ecoco is obviously one of the strongest in the country and a highly recommended one by us in the agency. We use it regularly for all our clients and have never had any failure rates or downtimes, which has always been amazing. Hey, Lawrence, we got you on the camera. Awesome. Um, Frank, would you like to continue? Would you like to give Lawrence um, his, his go first and we can carry on later? I think you're on a roll here. Uh, let's continue and then we'll jump back onto the front. Hey, Lawrence, welcome. Hey, good morning, everybody. Sorry, I was sitting in the wrong uh, virtual room. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Okay. Sorry. No morning, everybody. Back to you, Carl. So after you've got a good platform and a good payment gate where you've got to really worry about your logistics, if you haven't done um, your checkups on logistics. You obviously want to pick a logistic partner where you can that will integrate with the systems you have. So again, with WooCommerce and Shopify, those are some of the easiest to integrate with guys like you, Africa and Korea guys and various. I, when it comes to couriers, like to do the test trial. So try them before you write them off. Um, some people are expensive for good reason. Some people are cheap for good reason. So you don't always need one courier throughout the whole country. Um, and then borrowing all else, once you have your website and you've got your payment gateway and you've got your courier set up, if you're sending physical product, um, then make sure you work on, on your team, you know, get a good, a good VA if you're starting out. And if you're already a good company, then obviously scale up your content team or your integrations or, you know, tech team. Well, thanks, Carl. Really insightful. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, could we talk to, um, that bit around. Um, the systems and the tech, coming back to that again, 
Um, you mentioned the various providers that are existing out there. Um, I'd, I'd like us to talk about these two extremes. Um, we have, or well, there are businesses out there that exist that have a lot of capital and cash flow that are able to outsource um, technical skill sets in order to build out the, their e-commerce platforms. And then you also have uh, the types of businesses that are still getting up and running and perhaps are looking into potentially trying to uh, put it together themselves. Um, could you speak to these two extremes and any common mistakes you have seen occur on, on, on both sides where um, I'm a business owner, I've got capital and cash flow, and I can outsource this to the best of the best to build for me. And I, I almost have to, not to think about it. And then I am uh, on the other side, you have a business who uh, struggles a little bit with cash flow and capital, sees e-commerce as a, uh, an opportunity, and would like to dabble in getting it together themselves. What are the common mistakes that you have seen these two extreme business types make, and how might they overcome these mistakes in order to uh, get up and running? Oh, that that is just one of the best questions. Love that, Frank. That is really uh, so. It's true that whether you're a one man man, and we'll nickname it Bootstrap Bill, because everyone who's starting out for the birth of a concept in your startups generally are bootstrapping it. Honestly, they're paying it out of their salaries, they're paying it out of their savings, whatever the case is. And then you get the flip side: you get these mega corporates that spend five, six, seven figure annual annual monthly or even daily ad spends like we literally have clients who spend six figures daily in ad spend and one of the biggest things we see is this mentality in the industry where people are still stuck on print media this concept of one picture one perfect picture one perfect headline one perfect little image and in print media you had to do that you you had one shot per print to make something great so you know what you submitted to the magazine or the newspaper was it Merry Christmas, it cost you, cost you anything from two to 20 grand, depending on the publication for one shot. And whereas with digital, the biggest mistake most people make, and it's the biggest thing you can leverage, especially as a small business who has the ability to do this, is to diversify your content. And I don't just mean social organic content. So your Facebooks, Instagrams, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, and all the rest. What you want to do is you want to diversify your ad content as well. So don't assume you know what works the best. Assume you know potentially what works well. So do research on your demographics. So if you know you sell to ladies and ladies love flowers and it's a handbag or dress or something in that nature, then obviously pick content that is applicable in the peripheral sense. So what do ladies like in general and how can you put your handbag in that picture? So try 10 pictures, try 10 different headlines, try 10 different subheadlines. Um, so fam Facebook's famous for the 555, Google's more famous for 15 headlines, um, 15 pictures, five videos type of thing. So leverage maximum content on your ads as well as your organic, because at the end of the day, when the public tells you what they love, then you can go all in with the money. I see this happening too often where people are like so determined to say, this is what you will use. And then you go and blow a couple grand on this or a couple tens of grands on that particular thing. And then businesses wonder why they're not seeing sales, especially startups. And this is what hurts my heart the most because we have an entire startup division specifically geared to help bootstrap balls out. And the biggest thing is don't be scared to try, you know, give, let the public tell you what they love. Because once you know what they love and you know the streams that actually return you revenue, it becomes so much easier to scale your business because then you're playing to what people want. You're not assuming you know what they need. And this is often, there's a famous saying from um, Buzi Tempo Kwai, uh, one of his webinars, one of his masterclasses is, you assume the reason you're in business is the reason people buy, and that's not always the case. So try and find out why are they buying, not just because you're trying to solve a problem. Sounds, sounds good. And, and a really nice quote to tie it up quite well. Um, what I'm hearing is, um, be efficient around how you um, find customers. Um, don't burn cash because you have it. Um, almost learn and iterate based on, on what your customer needs are and, and use that to optimize um, your sort of acquisition funnel into, into your, into your e-commerce website. Um, could you please uh, speak to us a little bit around, um, as I'm building out as a business owner, building out these e-commerce uh, uh, part of my business or e-commerce platform, what are the key metrics that uh, I'm supposed to be using to measure the success 
of the e-commerce aspect of my business? What metrics should I be looking for in order to determine whether I'm headed in the right direction? Um, how, 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 what are those metrics um, in your mind? Ah. So this is, it's a very good, and it's a very important thing to look at when you're running business. This is something that most people having either not done retail or, you know, large scale volume, don't necessarily think about it, but you need to measure your business the same way you measure your health, the same way you measure your bank account. You can't just ignore the numbers and run, 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 run. And then a year from now, wonder why things didn't go the way you had hoped. What you want to do is you want to focus on. So in, initially people talk about this wonderful thing called the funnel and it, it literally applies like a cooking funnel in business. You have your various stages of business. And what you do is at your top end where you have the least awareness, people don't know anything about you. You never heard about you. Don't know who you are. You want to let you want to leverage the click through rate of anything. So this is the highest form of check that we do is, which is are people actually engaging with what you're making? Are they clicking through? If your click through rate, your CTR is low, and this is not the same as a conversion rate, the conversion rate will get to is the bottom end. So your click through rate, you want to try and always push for 10% and above. If your click through rates are under 5%, you're not doing bad, but if they're under 3%, you, you're really not hitting the mark with your mark. So 10% above is what you want to go for. This is why we say deploy 10 at a time. So you can see which of the 10 the public love. Then once you've done your top band click through rates, then you get to your mid node. This is where you have to educate people. You have to make them love you. You have to make them fall in love with the brand and the reason to buy for you. Now, this process can be in seconds on your website or can be in weeks and months for your marketing channels. You want to be able to look there at the levels of view content versus add to cart. So if you have 10,000 people coming in at click-through rates, and then you only have a thousand of them clicking down to add to cart, which would be an amazing because that's 10%, 10%, which rarely happens. It's normally like 10, 5, 3. Then when you take your add to cart, this is now when we start at the bottom of funnel, when you actually have people wanting to buy. Now everyone goes, oh, you go add to cart to purchase. Merry Christmas, goodbye. And that's not the case. You got to go add to cart, add payment info or check out, add payment info, then purchase. And you watch those percentages in the bottom four steps of your business. What happens is you can actually see if your top of funnel is yielding good percentages and suddenly everyone's disappearing on you on the bottom steps, it means you haven't got enough trust factors, enough reasons for people to buy. This is things like adding payment um, trust badges for your bank and your accepted payments throughout your checkout process. Um, clear and available shipping times. So if you're seeing a lot of click-through rate and a lot of content, but almost no ad cart, it means you're not most of the time clearly representing what the shipping costs and times will be. Now, over all the companies we've worked with, the general rule of thumb is work in shipping and offer it for free. It, it sounds like a gray hat thing, but it really is how business works online. If you charge shipping, no, don't get me wrong. You can charge free shipping from 750 up. People are used to that. 1000 up, depending on where you work out your margins are. But rather give the free shipping. If you're struggling to convert those add to cards to sales, give the free shipping. If you don't want to do it up front, offer it in email marketing as a follow-up. But it's going to jack your conversions. The biggest thing when you look at this wonderful funnel is you got to remember it's like gears on a bicycle. You cannot fix one and expect your bike to be amazing. You gotta tweak every step to get the funnel to be a wide funnel instead of this little drop off. But the rule of thumb, and I like to tell everyone this is, don't beat yourself up if you're around the 1% conversion. So if you have a thousand people coming to site and from those thousand people, a hundred add to cart and one buys. That's the industry standard for startups. Don't beat yourself up. It just says you need to work your way back up. Now, um, I'll share at the end of the day, at the end of the meeting with Ikoko, you guys are welcome to add it to the value pack, this awesome little breakdown of what the industry averages of the actual benchmarks are for average conversions. And most people will be shocked to find that it's actually only three to four, in cases, 5%. Now, as a data-driven performance agency, we obviously gun for higher than that. But for most people doing it themselves or corporates, if your conversion ratio is in the three to four to 5% margin, Consider the smaller ways to fix that. Don't, for example, throw away your agency or your support team because they can't make 10%. It's not that they're necessarily not good at their job. 
it's that there's necessarily smaller gears you have not addressed in your customer's journey. Thanks, Pat, for that, Carl. Very, very detailed um, and very insightful. I'd like to follow on um, concerning that topic of, of metrics to measure success. Um, do you have any, off the top of your head, rules of thumb um, that could be widely applicable across different business types? This is a, a lot to ask of you, Kyle, but um, this is what you signed up for. Um, that, that a business owner can apply in order to um, see a customer through from viewing their website into a purchase that, that really just, um, uh, you know, golden rules that work across industries um, um, that you might be able to share with us. Um, I, I think the audience will definitely appreciate that. Um, and we do appreciate that the level of complexity that comes with building an e-commerce business. I think all the, the details that you share um, and, and will share with the audience will um, be, be delved into uh, later on. Um, I believe that this will inspire a lot of research from the audience. Um, but what are the key takeaways um, concerning rules of thumb to uh, increase the conversion within your funnel? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna summarize it not to waffle too long. So the biggest the biggest five is this: never stop studying. It doesn't matter whether you're starting today or you started ten years ago. Never stop studying the industry. Tech is the fastest growing and developing industry on the planet, and e-com, which is basically how you make money from tech is equally so. So keep studying, keep watching webinars, keep watching series and go and take free courses where you can. It'll help you as a business owner or as an employee in the marketing division to really improve your craft and better understand the journey. The second thing would be experience it as the customer. Stop thinking as the owner. Stop thinking as the provider. Take a step back, breathe, look at it. Give it to your grandmother, give it to your kids. Give it to someone else and also look at it yourself and go through the journey. Is it easy? Do people know what they're doing? Can you get your website and know for certain, I'm arriving at the Leatherman buying Leathermans and here's the Leatherman and here's where I can buy. And make your customer journey simplistic. Don't overwhelm with shitloads of information on the top. Get the interest on the top and give the value and the information at the product page stage. That's generally a good one for number two. Number three, would be don't ever stop working on your business. Um, people have this mistaken idea that you've set a system up and, and um, Merry Christmas, I'm off. And that's not how it works. The rule of thumb is if your business can't survive without you, then you're not a business owner. You're just a, a really highly placed employee of your own business. What you want to do is check your systems. Go through your systems, test them regu regularly and rigorously. Test your systems. Are your signups working? When people sign up, do they get one email? Do they get two, three, four follow-ups? Um, when they uh, when they go through the buying process, how many pages does it take them to get from the homepage to pay you? If it's more than three pages, you have a bit of a problem. Five is still reasonably acceptable. But yeah, that brings me to my next point is, you know, the customer journey, the steps. Generally, when you advertise, please send them to your product page. The only reason to ever send someone to a collection page or a home page is if you're trying to build up your pixel but otherwise send them to the product page, let them choose and buy pretty much off the bat. Now, this brings me to my main and last point, pixels, data. Your business, don't ever think your ad spend is wasted. People make this, there's a common phrase I've heard a lot is, uh, half my ad spend was wasted and I don't know on what, I don't know which half. And it's not true. Every brand or cent you spend on staff or ad spend buys you data which helps you build your business. Ecom is the lowest cost to development of any business in the world. If you go open a brick and mortar store now, never mind the 50 to 100K in overhead you'll have monthly from day one. Ecom, your overheads are low, but your data is so much more amazing. If you set up your pixel from Facebook or Google, your tag manager, these three things, literally these three things are the most important. Analytics, tag manager, and your pixels, whether from Google or Facebook or wherever you're you know, advertising, it's like nine different good strong platforms. So watch the data, check what people are doing through your business and then optimize those levels. And if you follow that procedure of consistently learning, consistently optimizing, changing the gears, watching your data, you will consistently slim line your business to the point where you're able to run a seven figure business or a, let's, let's be, let's say a six figure monthly business. You can get to seven figure monthly on five to 10 people. People misunderstand, this is not retail. You don't need 30 to 100 employees to get to seven figures. 
You can do it in five to 10 staff members as long as each one is well trained and consistently managed. You're the manager of the business. So try and make sure you manage the functions of the business. And if it is worth less than your time, hire someone to do it for you if you can. Thank you so much, Carl. Uh, such a beautiful way to wrap it up. Uh, I believe it has inspired a lot of thought. Uh, very insightful. Uh, just a reminder to the audience that uh, we have a Q&A open. So please post all the questions that you have in the chat and we'll address some of them at the end, uh, towards the end of this um, uh, webinar. Uh, we'd like to now transition uh, to Lawrence. Um, as I introduced up front, Lawrence Held. Uh, Lawrence is the founder of Folk Cafe. Um, a restaurant and roastery that uh, runs brick and mortar um, and has also transitioned into e-commerce. Um, again, hello, Lawrence. Nice to have you on the call. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have you on. Just ensure that you are not on mute there. Um, could you please uh, tell us a little bit about the type of business you run? Um, also talk to us about what inspired you to start selling online. Thanks. Thanks, Frank, and uh, thanks, Carl. That was um, yeah, very insightful. Thank you. Um, yeah, so so we we we're folk. Um, we we we've been in the roasting business. It's it's been uh, beans or coffee beans have been in our blood for for almost uh, four uh, four decades now. So <laughs> it's been been quite a while. Um, yeah, so fundamentally, we are a, a coffee roaster, um, and then and then we we uh, we transition into the the sort of restaurant space, um, and then and then from there, you know, sort of looking at sales, um, sales growth, everything like that. Obviously, the natural transition was to was to head into the into the online online space, um, and and. A big push for us was uh, on both sides was uh, was COVID, and and I think uh, what 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 Carl was was sort of hinting at there is that you know a, a lot of the the sort of online space it uh, it it takes it takes a lot of of time and and we realised very quickly that uh, it's it's not something that you can just throw money at um, you you need to sort of understand um you know how how these things work how the analytics work um and and actually through covid um you know one one of the the, the sort of small blessings that came from it i mean we learned a lot in, in that time um but because of of our brick and mortar stores actually being completely null and void we had to shift and we had to shift fast um and and you know with, without much um optimism you know, we, we, we were sort of told it was going to be, I think everybody remembers it was going to be a, a two week lockdown and then the, those two weeks turned into two years. <laughs> um, so, so we managed to, to throw ourselves into, into learning this, this online space. Um, and, 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 and as Carl said, you know, we, 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 um, we, we, we learned a lot. We, you know, we did online courses. Uh, wherever we could find free information, we 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 sort of delved into it. We laughed it up, um, and um, and yeah. So so here we are today with with a, a great new uh, side of our business, which 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 has been exciting. It's it's really adds yeah. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, thanks for that story. I, I think there's a quite a common theme there around businesses being forced during the pandemic to pivot. Um, and I'm glad to hear that you were able to do that successfully. Um, could you talk us through some of the the, the key milestones um, that you experienced on your way to setting up an e-commerce business? Um, as a business owner, what were the key milestones, um, be it um, the setting up your website using a particular tech platform, uh, be it um, starting to spend money on marketing, be it any changes that you made to your e-commerce platform to optimize um, what, some of the things that Carl has mentioned around conversion and the conversion funnel. Um, could you just talk us through at a high level some of those key milestones in setting up an online business? I think I think it's it's one of those things where the the more time you spend on it, um, you know, it doesn't matter in in what sort of sort of space you you look at it, whether whether it's the 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 the, the payment gateway. 
whether it's the the online marketing, whether it's the the analytics, um, you know, we find at at each point we we hit a bigger target, a, a bigger targeted audience, and it's 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 incredible that you know a little bit of work into it, and and um, you know we we we, have, we probably was the uh, I think Carl, Carl hit on it a couple of times, the, the bootstrap ball companies, you know, <laughs> and uh, it, it is just so nice to see that, you know, when, when you, when you're taking in good advice, um, you know, on each and every step, you know, and you can see those little steps actually converting into sales. Um, so, I mean, any milestone for us is is a is a converted sale and you know and and a, a big thing for us is repeat sales um uh that's that's also another way which i measure our our success um you know it's is those people coming back enjoying the experience um and and you're purchasing time and time and time again whether it's on on the restaurant side you know ordering ordering their, their, their family meal once a week um, or on the coffee side, whether it's it's getting their sort of monthly supplies, uh, their, their beans delivered to their door. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think I think actually for, for us, one of the biggest metrics is those return sales for us. Jack, thank you so much for that, Lawrence. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, I, I think we all are privy to the challenges of transitioning um, uh, in, into e-commerce and, and hence this call, right? Uh, this is about learning how to overcome some of those challenges. Could you speak to the challenges that you experienced um, transitioning and how you and your business were able to overcome them? Yeah, so just from from the two different spheres of the business, from the, from the, the roastery side, which is... is, um, is is more of the manufacturing side. Um, so, you know, we, we can, we, we, we can, we can look at the, at the certain amount of cells that, that, that we can sort of take. And, and we also supply to, to, um, to sort of bigger, uh, corporations that, that, that also sort of use us as like a sort of white label roaster. Um, so, so on that side, it's relatively easy to manage our, our stock. Um, you know, we can, we can sort of forward buy beans for, for months, um, which, which gives us a bit of headroom, but then on the, on the food side, you know, we, we, when we added the online space, it became very difficult, you know, and, um, in, in, in our restaurants, we, we've got sort of pause systems that don't really speak to our online systems. So, <laughs> You know, when, uh, when, when all we could do was, was sell online, uh, during one of the stages of lockdown, um, where you couldn't buy a, a warm chicken, but you could buy a pizza delivered. Ah, it was, <laughs> it was crazy. But, um, I, I just remember days where we had orders flying through from our online site, but I mean, at a, at a rate, I mean, we couldn't even get the emails to sort of follow chronologically, you know, so, so we had to sort of be on the back end looking at the orders coming in that way and, uh, and, and learning how to manage that was, was incredible. And that was such a learning curve for us. Um, um, we, we still don't actually have a, a proper answer, which, which I'm, which I'm busy sort of working with, with the, the points of sales guys now to try and try and get something that, 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 that can speak to the, the two systems. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just managing those, those, um, those, those situations, which, uh, which was, 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 was a massive learning curve for us. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. I'm, I'm hearing, uh, what you're saying around the convergence of your brick and mortar and your e-commerce uh, being a challenge also the influx of e-commerce orders coming in and having to manage operationally that um and um but i think that's quite quite some interesting challenges you face and I, I like your honesty around the fact that these are challenges that you're still dealing with today and are going to figure out and um, hopefully um this conversation is just the beginning um of of, of that uh, path to um figuring figuring things out um if you were to do this all over again um, 
what would you do differently? Um, what are the, you know, the, the main learnings, uh, the wisdom uh, sort of clean from your experience of transitioning online? What would you do differently um, if you could talk to Lawrence pre-pandemic? <laughs> um, I think it would be to be a bit more open-minded. The, the, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, not tech savvy, but, um, you know, the online space, it's, it's quite a scary big place when you don't know any of these big words and, and systems, um, you know, and, 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 and looking at, um, especially, you know, hitting on that issue, you know, looking at systems that, that, that can, that can sort of streamline your business, make yourself easier, you know, make, make your, your, your business that, you know, just make it more streamlined. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in certain cases, you know, we, we have found very good APIs that, that, that talk across our systems, um, you know, but I could have found those quicker if I was a bit more open-minded. Um, you know, a lot of them come with, with costs and, and I was very hesitant. Uh, I still am, <laughs> uh, you know, adding layers onto your, onto your website and, you know, sort of, you know, with, without, without testing them and, and, and it does, you know, like the, the, those, those sort of plugins and add-ons and everything, you know, they, they're all, um, they all cost and, and you don't really know what they are, but yeah, I mean, sort of lessons learned, um, yeah, just being a bit more open-minded, you know, looking into these things, you know, sort of trusting them. Um, it, I, I, I think I could have done, could have done a bit better there. <laughs> cool. Great lessons learned. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm going to be putting you on the spot a little bit with this question. So no worries. Please do forgive me. Um, could you name drop, uh, maybe three of your, um, uh, most prized, uh, tools or systems, uh, that you have used, uh, for your e-commerce, uh, platform. I, I think that this will be important in, uh, sort of pointing some of the business owners on the call in the direction of some of the, uh, tools that they could, uh, use in order to streamline operations, uh, go, go, uh, and use, uh, e-commerce or, or transition into e-commerce. Um, I know Kyle has name dropped a, a few systems, uh, but are there any top of mind, uh, that you would like to share with the audience? For me, um, as, as a sort of, you know, a, a person sort of looking at this and, and trying to, trying to learn as much as I can, um, uh, Shopify, uh, it, it's, it's really got some great, great, great tools. Um, and it, it's got, it's got systems that, that, that are easy for, 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 for anybody to speak to. Um, and, and on there, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a wave of, of applications just to, to, um, streamline between your accounting systems um so so we we're, we're currently using sage um and and the two work very well so especially um as i was saying on on the roastery side um uh, you know just sort of being able to forecast um our, our production um you know with with those orders that are coming through whether it be uh sort of brick and mortar sales um and online sales um, there's very good system integration between, between Sage and, uh, and Shopify, which is, which is greatly sort of streamlined everything. Um, and, and just removed a lot of admin, um, uh, especially on the, on the accounting side as well. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I can, I can, I can recommend, uh, for, for, for ease of use, um, definitely Shopify. <laughs> Thanks for that, Lawrence. Really appreciate it. And just to tie it up uh, in, in concluding this conversation, um, what advice would you give um, to uh, a business owner who's thinking of transitioning, uh, I mean, fresh off the ground uh, into using um, e-commerce, uh, similar to, to the state that you were in a couple of years back? I would say, um, again, uh, put yourself into it. Don't, don't let anybody, uh, dictate to you, 
um, there, there's a lot of guys um, uh, out there that 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 will tell you that you know this 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 certain way is 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 how you need to go into the online space and you need to put this amount of spend or else you're not going to do anything you know. Uh, start off small, start in your local communities. Um, it's exactly exactly how we roll. You know, we, we, we look at our local communities where we can deliver quickly um, and, and actually process our deliveries ourselves. Yeah, um, you know, it's obviously way more cheaper than than uh, than using a third party. And and we started from there, you know, we um, we, we really went hard, hit our uh, like like local Facebook groups, uh, you know, even even sort of went on to the local community chats, uh, you know, advertising our products, um, you know, start, start local, um, hone your product, hone your skill, um, listen to your customers from there. Um, and then, and then we started sort of delving wider, wider audiences, um, you know, looking at nationally. So now, yeah, we, we can, we can basically deliver anywhere in South Africa very comfortably. Um, and and hopefully expect those repeat orders. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence there from Folk Cafe, uh, really giving us uh, his tips on how he's transitioned online, uh, some of the challenges he's faced, and uh, some tips on, on on what to look out for as a business owner. Really appreciate your time, Lawrence, and thanks for thanks for joining. We will now quickly transition into our Q and A. Uh, there are a lot of questions coming up. Um, and uh, we'll just uh, share it with the with the larger audience and give you some answers to some of the uh, questions that you have. Um, so our first question uh, that we'd like to just uh, bring up, um, and I'd like to pose this one to Kyle, um, is uh, from one of our audience members asking, what is the best website, payment gateway, and shipping uh, service provider to use when starting up? So it's a website, I assume website builder, uh, payment gateway, uh, shipping company to use when starting up, and what are the average costs, the average monthly costs of of of, of doing this? Before um, I, I hand this question over to you, Kyle, uh, considering the payment gateway bit, I'm just going to put a, a shameless uh, plug in there. Uh, Ecoca's payment gateway is pristine. It is uh, top of the shelf, and it's great to enable you to uh, run and grow your business um, at a very, very, very low cost. So uh, Carl, I'm going to hand over to you, uh, website payment gateway and shipping company. Awesome source. Yeah, hundred percent on the payment gateway there. Ecoca is one of literally the best in the country. So I hundred percent agree with that James Plunk. <laughs> um, when it comes to websites, the short answer is if you don't have a lot of budget, go Shopify. It's a little bit, it starts you off with a monthly, you know, it's just 400 bucks, which is pretty cheap for South Africa. Um, South Africa, funny enough, has a discounted value compared to the rest of the world so we're in a unique position to be able to take advantage of that and um so yeah definitely start with shopify if you don't want to get too hardcore ticky ticky and then on the shipping companies so that's a bit of a situational answer it depends because who might be cheapest for you locally might not be cheapest for you nationally and definitely won't be cheapest for you internationally so what i would say is Pick your logistic partners based on preference and location. So one of the easiest way to get started is Pudo and door to door via Pargo, um, counter to counter, I think it's Pargo. So you can go to PostNet, you can go to PEP, you can go to so many facilities these days, which literally allow you to pay 50 bucks or 100 bucks and send up to five kilos anywhere in the country. And in most cases, like PostNet, it was a great starter for a lot of our startup incubators. It's telling them, hey guys, if you can't afford the setup charge, because career, career guy, career scan, fast ways, there's so many careers out there. Like you don't understand, there's thousands. But there's a lot of big boys that play well. So you Africa recently became, I think, Bob Go, or they will become Bob Go soon. And they're great for integration because you can pre-integrate and they have a massive list of pre-author um, approved careers in that system. So if you want to automate delivery, probably go with that as a starting base. The other guys like Fastways, Career Guide, them, most of them you have to pay a pretty, I don't want to say hefty, but you do have to pay a certain amount to start your accounts with them. Uh, most of it goes into like a prepaid account towards your expenses, but um, that varies. It really does. Down here in the low felt, we can open up logistical accounts for a grand, grand five. Joburg, I know some people pay five, seven and a half, even 10 grand to open their logistical accounts. 
Whereas Pogo, Pudo, Pet, Postnet, all of these things, you pretty much walk in, you write down where you want to send it, you pay your 50 bucks and it's gone. You know, so that's one of the easiest ways to go about your logistics in the start. If you're going higher volume, I do genuinely suggest going with one of the bigger couriers in the country. There are so many, so this is where reviews and trial comes down to it. You know, check out their sites, check out Hello Peter. Slight note though, don't crucify a courier company because their Hello Peter may be bad. Remember, companies do grow, companies do improve. Um, guys like Fastways and Courier Guy and Parcel Ninja went a massive amount of effort over the past year to really improve their service logistics. So, best piece of advice there, get to know your branch manager. If you are friendly and helpful with your branch manager, he will be friendly or she with you. If you treat them badly, same thing with the drivers, become friendly with them. Because if you get their contact number and you can arrange, promise you they'll bend over backwards in some cases to help you. If you're really mean to them, it's like trying to be mean to someone at SARS. Good luck getting service. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Thank you so much, uh, Kyle. Uh, really good answers, Ben. Uh, moving on to the second question, we have a, another audience member who runs their business on Facebook and Google. Um, uh, this particular individual needs someone who has expertise uh, in reviewing and analyzing these platforms from an advertising perspective. Um, they're asking around, do you have any recommendations concerning someone who's not going to cost them, in their words, an arm and a leg? Uh, so so we, can, we, we can see there's a clear trend around ensuring to sort of maximize you know, capital efficiency and not overspend um, if there are service providers who are going to um, help them uh, make ends meet. So do you have any recommendations, uh, Kyle, around um, uh, individual service providers who can help with analyzing, optimizing, advertising platforms? Uh, any recommendations? So not to famously plug, but because I come from a bootstrap all situation and because I've built up most of what I have and most of what I, we have for our clients over the past decade, you know, with that in mind, with cost in mind, because the better the agency, the more expensive they are. I'm not going to beat around the bush with it. If you want a corporate agency, you're going to pay corporate agency price because they're large and you're paying for their employees. Whereas if you want to get started and you really want to just look at it and see what's good, we offer a free one hour support session to anyone in this webinar. And it's basically there. It's literally free. It's no obligation. I don't do this as a, a weird tactic. Um, I have a paid forward mentality. I strongly believe in business. It is a good thing to be as a business owner to have a bit of paid forward. I mean, don't cut your own throat, but at the same time, help where you can. So what we do is we generally have a free one hour where we go through everything and we basically tell you, hey guys, like this is what's good. This is what's bad. She has the free programs you can use to work out how to fix it. And then after that free one hour, during that free one hour, we do, we make some recommendations. Certain developers are good for certain platforms. Certain agencies are better for certain things. Um, you know, we ourselves are a pretty decently sized agency and we handle everything from birth of concept to the corporate. So if your account is right with our systems, we can help you. However, and I say this very specifically, not everyone fits well. So if, for example, we do the free one hour and we don't work out, it's not a personal issue. Just remember in business, your systems have to mesh. If you have personality types that are bad, you're going to have degradation in the communication and the quality of output. This is the same thing for hiring employees. If you're hiring an external agency or an external person, so agency, also a slight thing to remember, most agencies have specializations. So they're either an SEO agency or a dev agency or a ads agency. Um, what I would recommend is try and find yourself a generalist if you're starting out. If it's a cost-effective type measure, try and get yourself more of a generalist. Um, and then potentially, if you're really small, consider a VA, a virtual assistant, as opposed to hiring an entire agency. But again, somewhere during this or at the end of this, I'll post a link for everyone to get that free one-hour session. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, well, thanks, Carl. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, moving on to our next question. Uh, we have a service-based business that's um, asking a uh, question around how they scale up with e-commerce. I think... The, the general uh, thoughts or the general imagination is that when we're talking about e-commerce, we're talking about selling products. Uh, but the reality is that we do have service-based businesses that do run successful e-commerce 
um, arms or wings of their business. I would like to direct this one at Lawrence, and that's why I confused your names because I had Lawrence at the top of my mind. Um, Lawrence, you, you, your, your business, Full Cafe, have quite a diversified portfolio um, that deals both with products and services. Um, could you speak a little bit um, to the service-based uh, part of the business and um, any advice around scaling a, a service-based business using e-commerce? Yeah, so uh, I, th I think for us, it's uh, it's it's a little bit uh, different because we offer the services as a sort of add-on um, so people can go on and then book a service for their coffee machine at the same time as putting in a, in a bag of coffee. Um, but I mean, exactly that it's, it's, um, it's, 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 I think it's, it's the same as, as, as selling, um, any, any sort of physical product is, is just, you know, honing your market, um, uh, finding out where they are, finding out how to reach them, um, and, and making sure that you stand out and look a lot better than, <laughs> than, than, uh, than, than the rest of the guys, uh, also trying to do the same. Hey, thanks for that, Lawrence. I um, really appreciate that. Um, could you speak a little bit uh, concerning the... I, I do know that you have a service as an add-on, uh, but I would imagine that uh, with service-based businesses, there isn't a, as much an issue operationally around fulfillment or delivery because, uh, you know, uh, it's a service-based business. Uh, could you speak a little bit uh, concerning that? Um, is, is that incorrect? Is that correct? Uh, do you have any uh, further thoughts on on uh, the, the fulfillment of a uh, an order or a booking? Yeah, so I think um, I mean, as as I said, we, we we are sort of more more towards the the, the product. So I mean, uh, another service which we do which we do offer is um, is the the sort of barista training um, and and the coffee courses. Um, and I mean, it's it it, it is. I, I think. It it speaks again, you know. When when we first got into the online space, we we also looked at it, I think, incorrectly as as you know, we wanted to be fully online and and um, you know we we wanted the systems just to speak to the clients and and I think we at one stage we went a bit a bit wayward because we still needed that human touch, you know. So so when people are making bookings, you know, it it might not be fully apparent to them, you know, how your booking works, how, how that, that coffee service is going to work, what time the technician. So, you know, often when, when we get those, those, those situations, you know, it, it's, it's so much better just to have that point of contact with the client, you know, pick up the phone, uh, pop a WhatsApp, um, you know, that that's vitally important is that, that, that personal um that that personal touch just just explaining to people how 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 your your services work um you know what what times you'll be there you know s making sure you stick to those 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 appointments um and and so that everything is is sort of out in the open you know and it's not just a customer talking to a to a computer well said lawrence thank you so much for that uh, we are going to uh, move on to our last question uh, for today. Um, and this one's uh, quite a simple one, but I think uh, it echoes the sentiments of so many business owners. Um, and it's, how do I get people to my website? Ads are very, yes. <laughs> um, so I, I think the consideration here is, um, are there any um, cost-effective ways to get pe eyeballs onto one's website? Um, considering the you know the cost cost of advertising, and I'd like to pause pose this one to Kyle um, just to uh, wrap up our Q and A. Okay, fantastic. So the best way to go about leveraging the cost of advertising in any business is don't. We have this thing called national minimums. In every country, they're slightly different, and in every industry, they're slightly different. But for the sake of this webinar. The South African average is 20 Rand a day plus 3 Rand in tax, which is 15%. So if you take 23 Rand and you times that by call it a 31 day business, um, you're going to get 690 bucks, call it 700 Rand. So 700 Rand tax in is your minimum per ad or per campaign, depending how you structure it. One of the best ways to leverage your expense is to do one campaign, multiple ad groups. So they all the ad groups have to share the budget, or you can do each ad group with that sort of 23 rand. The idea being that if you test on the minimum 
and you see what returns the highest value. So this works to the rule of three by three by three or 10 by 10 by 10, um, depending on how you scale. You're going to run three or 10 cheap minimum ads to get or add groups, depending on how your business is structured, you buy your categories or product. And then what you want to do is see which performs the best and then give that slightly more money. So I'll be honest with everyone. Big sales traction really only happens from about 50 or 100 rand a day. But I don't advise anybody to throw 100 rand a day at, at their first attempt. You, you're going to flush your money and burn it. Start with a 20 rand an ad. Work out what gives you good return, what's got the highest click-through rate, the highest conversion rate. And after you've done your first 10 and you've scaled that down to the best three and from the best three you've replicated out and you know, you've done that, you're going to end up with a situation where five ad groups at 20 rand is 100 rand anyway a day. So that's three grand a month. So if you can prepare, I normally tell most startups and most businesses, prepare a 2,100 or a 3,000, which is technically like 2.8 budget for your ad spend. So if you work in multiples of 700, 7, 14, 21, 28. So work in multiples of 700 and that'll allow you to multiply your testing scale. If you've got big budgets, test more. If you have small budgets, test carefully, but test. Thank you so much, Carl. Uh, quite a nice way to round up our Q&A. Um, I'd like to extend a thanks to our lovely guests, uh, Lawrence and Kyle. Thank you guys for joining us, uh, sharing extremely helpful insights. Um, I'd just like to uh, give a heads up to the audience that we have a six-week program that we'll be sending out via email, uh, which will break down in extremely simple terms how to get, get up and running um, in e-commerce. So look out for that from us. Um, and I'd also like to extend a reminder that we have as Ecoca, three e-commerce products that make it delightfully easy um, to accept payments from customers. Uh, we have our payment gateway for those of you who are building websites using Wix, WooCommerce, and WordPress. We have a pay link that does not require a website in order to accept payments from customers. Just use our uh, very easy to use Ecoca app. Then we have a digital invoice where you're able to send quick digital invoices to your customers. Uh, check them out on ecoca.com. Um, I'd just like to finally close with uh, thanks to everyone. Um, see you at our next webinar where we will be uncovering insights about using social commerce. Um, cheers and have a wonderful Friday. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.